it's Hunter and welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, it is so nice to meet you. In today's video, we're going to be wrapping up my February reading and I'm going to be giving you guys a review of every book that I read in February. I have read 17 and I'm almost finished with book number 18. So that's fun. That puts me at 38 for the year. I'm so excited to be sharing these with you guys. This is probably one of my favorite videos to film just because I can give you guys really good opinions on the books that I read because I'm not very good at keeping up with them anywhere else. So I hope you guys enjoy videos like this and I don't want this video to last forever. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first book I read in February was The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood and I gave this book a five stars. I personally really loved that this was STEM related. I personally am not a STEM woman. I am a creative arts woman. My degree <laughs> is a Bachelor of Arts in Digital Media. So I'm definitely not a STEM person at all. I hate math. I hate science. I've never really been good at it. It goes over my head. But I really loved that this book was STEM related because I feel like there are so many many rom-coms out there that are related to creative things where someone is in advertising, they're a social media influencer, they are a YouTuber, they work, did I already say advertising? They're a social media manager, they do creative jobs and those are great but this was a very nice change of pace. I really loved Olive and Adam's relationship. I thought that their fake dating was really cute and I also felt like it just played out really well. There were parts of it that I was definitely not expecting but overall I felt like it was really good. Basically, premise of this book is Olive needs a fake boyfriend. She kisses her professor or a professor at her school, Adam, and they start a fake relationship, which is supposed to be beneficial for both of them. I thought it was super good. The next book I read was Finding Cinderella by Colleen Hoover, and this is a novella, so it was quite short. Apparently, the Kindle edition is 176 pages, but I feel like it really only took me like an hour to get through the whole thing. It is a novella sequel to the Losing Hope and Hopeless series. And it was free on Apple Books and I'm pretty sure it's on Kindle Unlimited too, or maybe it's free on Kindle. I don't know. Either way, you have the best friend of Skye and the best friend of Holder from the Hopeless series and things happen. I can't tell you too much about it because it kind of gives away the entire novella because it is so short. But overall, I'm a really big fan of this. I think it was super cute. I like how it was fast paced and for a novella. I did think it ended quite abruptly, but I do know that after this one, it continues on in there's like a novella after all your perfects that like ties all of them together so I'm excited to read that because it will kind of tie everything together for me but I thought it was good so I gave it five stars the next book I read I actually received as an arc but I didn't read it before it came out so it came out at the end of January but it's Josh and Gemma make a baby and I thought this one was so cute basically I'm gonna yeah okay so we have Gemma who wants a baby but she is single so she is going to go through IVF which is in vitro fertilization Basically, you take an egg, you take sperm, you create an embryo, and then you implant it into her uterus. That is that is the basic of I the basics of IVF. But she wants to do that, but she does not want to use a random donor. So she asks her brother's best friend Josh, and he agrees. So that's kind of the premise of the book. So now let me read you my review because I thought it was a good review. I said the characters were genuinely so cute. I loved Gemma's family, and Josh was so fun all the time. He was so sweet to Gemma and so supportive during the IVF journey throughout the entire process. The support group, she goes to a fertility support group. Um, the support group had me cackling at times. They were so funny and I loved how different each of the people in the support group were and this was overall a very fun read. I loved that it touches on topics of miscarriage, infertility, and IVF which are typically considered taboo until it happens to you. I really appreciated the author's take and thought it was tastefully written. So that was my thoughts on Josh and Gemma make a baby. Five stars by the way. <laughs> Next is a really tricky one and requires every trigger warning there ever was. It is All the Beautiful and Ugly Things by Bryn Greenwood and I gave this one four stars because because I feel like I was very conflicted and this book made me think so hard. I'm just gonna read the description to you because I don't know how else to describe it. So let me just pull it up real quick. As the daughter of a drug dealer, Wavy knows not to trust people, not even her own parents. It's safer to keep her mouth shut and stay out of sight. Struggling to raise her little brother, Donald, eight-year-old Wavy is the only responsible adult around. Obsessed with a constellation, she finds peace in the starry night sky above the fields behind her house until one night her stargazing causes an accident. After witnessing his motorcycle wreck, she forms an unusual friendship with one of her father's thugs, Kellen, a tattooed ex-con with a heart of gold. By the time Wavy's a teenager, her relationship with Kellen is the only tender thing in a brutal world of addicts and debauchery. When tragedy rips Wavy's family apart, a well-meaning aunt steps in, and what is beautiful to Wavy looks ugly under the scrutiny of the outside world. Kellen may not be innocent, but he is in the fixed point in Wavy and Donald's chaotic universe. Instead of playing it safe, Wavy has to learn to fight for Kellen, for her brother, and for herself. I don't 
don't know. This book was really, really, really hard. And it was hard to read. It was so good, but it was so hard to read. And it's hard to read because you feel, I felt super conflicted in a lot of my feelings whenever I was reading this because there are things that like, you know, are so wrong. And like, even in the description, it says Kellen may not be innocent. He may not be innocent, but he is also the only thing in the world that Wavy and her brother have. And so I just had a lot of conflicting emotions um, because there are things, like I said, you know are wrong, but also like you're just conflicted because you're seeing every single side of the story instead of just one. So I'll leave with that what you will. But if you have, like I said, just check your trigger warnings on this one because there was a lot that happened in this. Next was a very light read. It was called Maybe We Should by Melissa Foster and it is part of the Silver Harbor series. It's the second book in the series. You have this girl who has kind of been trying to avoid the gaze of this one guy for a while and finally she decides to spend time with him. Five stars. Cute. Overall cute. Just like a, a fun light read. Next is another one I got as in as an arc and it is hashtag follow me for murder by Sarah E. Bird. Um, I gave this one four stars. It wasn't it wasn't it for me. Basically you have this girl she is an influencer slash blogger but she also is trying to solve a murder. Yeah she has a uh, a consulting kind of like PR business on the side of her influencing thing and she's going to meet one of her clients and someone is dead inside of their office so she's trying to figure out who killed these people. This is more of a cozy mystery but I like cozy mysteries more in theory than in practice just because I felt like there were parts of this book that kind of just could have been taken out. I don't know parts of it were slow. I felt like they were not necessary. They didn't really move the story along very well and quite frankly weren't very helpful but I didn't think it was a bad story so that's that's it. It was just kind of eh for me. Next is Good is Dead by Sarah Walter and this one was from Kindle Unlimited and I actually listened to this one. You have this mom and this daughter who, what did I give this? Five stars. I gave it five stars. You have this mom and this daughter who move into this new really big house after an accident happens and the person who is putting them up in this house is the works for the person who caused the accident. Uh... I was shook. I was really shook. This was quite actually a very good book. Um, I just felt like there were a lot of twists and turns that I was not expecting. So five out of five for me, definitely a thriller. Next was a book that was absolutely adorable to me and it was Meet Me in the Margins by Melissa Ferguson. I gave this one five stars. This is the perfect clean romance that's not so involved in romance. Like there's so many other things happening that romance is just a part of the story, but it's not like the most thing in the story. I'm trying to think. This came out on February 15th. Um, I also got this one as in arc and basically you have this girl named Savannah. She is a low level editor at a literary and nonfiction publishing house. But she's writing a romance novel and her romance novel manuscript falls into the hands of the wrong person. But then that person starts editing her story and they kind of get to know each other in the margins of her manuscript. They meet in this secret room in the office. And like I said, they get to know each other through the margins of her manuscript. And it is so cute and so fun. But she's also kind of developing feelings for her boss and it's really cute. It's really cute. Five stars. The next one is Tools of Engagement by Tessa Bailey and this is the third book in the Hot and Hammered series. So I've read the other two books, Fix Her Up and Love Her or Lose Her. And I think this was my second favorite. So I like Fix Her Up and then this one and then Love Her or Lose Her. This one got five stars for me. I thought it was really cute. You basically have the last sister. Her name is, what is her name? You have Bethany. She is trying to renovate a house all by herself. She has no crew or anything. And Wes, who is newly in town, he's younger than her and he has come to town to take care of his niece. Kind of leaves his work and goes to help her and they're working on renovating this house and I thought it was really cute especially because my husband is renovating a house right now so just like reading about all the things that have to do with a house reno kind of fun for me. Next is You'll Be the Death of Me by Karen M. McManus. I have read a lot of her books and I feel like she is the blueprint for young adult thriller. Very good. I did give this one four stars out of five. I've given all of her other books five stars but for me this one just wasn't it. There were parts of it that I felt like were kind of slow. It didn't really keep my interest that much, but I do think it was a good story. The mystery was good, but there were parts of it that were kind of confusing. You have these three kids. They were friends in middle school and then their senior year of high school, they decide to ditch school together. They go to Boston and they find one of their classmates dead. And there's a lot that goes on with that. I thought it was good, like I said, but I feel like there was just something to be desired in this book that just wasn't quite there for me. So that's why I gave it four stars, but I do think it was really good. And if you like young adult thrillers, 
colors, I'd give it a shot. This, there's like a curl on this side of my head that's driving me nuts and it probably looks way worse in person than it does on camera, but it's driving me crazy. The next book is The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary and I thought this one was so adorable. This one actually reminded me of Meet Me in the Margins, but you have these two people, they're living in the same flat or apartment and he is there 9 a.m. to 6 and she's there from 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. or something like that. So they're supposed to never cross paths, cross paths, but they live in the same apartment, just not at the same time. They're even sleeping in the same bed. Again, just not at the same time and they get to know each other through notes throughout their apartment. And I just think it is adorable. He works the night shift. That's why he's there during the day. But I think it's adorable. Just, it's really cute. Five stars for me. Next is The Paid Bridesmaid by Soraya Wilson. And I have read another book by her before and I really liked it. So I greatly enjoyed this one. This one came out on January 1st. So it's a pretty new book. She also wrote Room Maid. But basically there is this girl, she has a business where she is a bridesmaid for people when they need to even the other people or they don't have any friends or whatever the case may be. She is the paid bridesmaid of a social media influencer and she has made a rule for herself not to date anyone from the weddings that she works and then she meets the best man and she's instantly attracted to him. He's attracted to her and they have to spend a lot of time together but she is trying to like convince herself that she's not attracted to him um, or that like attraction isn't bad but she can't do anything about it because she is working this wedding. So overall lots of tension. Very fun. It's a very clean read as well so I'm a big fan. <laughs> the next one is not so clean. It is a not so meet cute by Megan Quinn. You have this guy who lies to someone and says that he has a fiance that is also pregnant and there is this girl who just lost her job and cannot move out of her parents house like she said. So she has to figure out how to move out but without money. So she runs into this guy while she's looking for a rich husband and they decide to fake date for him to be her fake fiance and she has to pretend to be pregnant and all this stuff. Lots of tension. Very spicy in my opinion. This book came out at the end of last year so it's also pretty new and it's on Kindle Unlimited. So I thought it was cute. I gave it five stars. The next one is another arc and I had quite a few arcs to get through. Um, this one doesn't come out until June I think. Yeah it comes out June 14th 2022 so it does still have quite a bit of time left before it comes out but it's called Local Gone Missing by Fiona Barton and this is a thriller. You have this guy Charlie. He goes missing and everyone's trying to figure out what like why he's missing, where he's gone, lots of secrets in this small town. I thought it was really good, but there were parts of it that kind of lost my interest, so I did give it four stars, but overall I thought it was really good. The next book is one that fully reignited my love for thriller novels, and it is The Wives by Taryn Fisher. Five stars fully on this one. There, listen, on the front cover of the book, there is a quote, and what just happened? There is a quote and it says that you will get whiplash from beginning to end. And I feel like there was so much emotional whiplash. I didn't know what I was gonna do with myself. There was like the first half of the book, you're just like kind of literally the first half of the book, like up to page 150 out of 300 pages is just like laying the groundwork for this book. And then suddenly something happens and you learn this thing about the main character and you're mind blown. And then you think that reality is one thing but it's actually something else. And then you think it's something else. I don't know, lots of stuff going on. And obviously it explains everything at the end of the book, but I just thought it was literally so good. So I definitely am so glad I read it. But basically you have this girl and she says that her husband has two other wives. They're polygamists. So she gets him on Thursday and then he has Monday and Tuesday with other people. Or he's like, he has a Monday wife and he has a Tuesday wife. And then the other days, I don't really know what he's doing, but she has all these different, um, she like gets to know the Monday wife and then she like tries to get to know the Tuesday wife. She's not supposed to know who they are, but she doesn't want her husband to find out. It's really trippy, honestly. Really trippy, really good. Would highly recommend. The next one is The One Night by Megan Quinn. And this is the prequel novella to The Reunion by Megan Quinn. This one is literally, it says it's 200 pages, but I just don't feel like it was 200 pages. It came out at the end, mid-December of 2021. So it is the prequel novella. So it will be the next one that I read by her will be The Reunion. But you have this guy who is newly divorced his mom take him, his mom and dad take him to a bar to set him up with anyone to be a wing woman they run into his ex-wife's best friend and they kind of hit it off so that's all i got for you right now five stars 
The last one that I have completed was also on Kindle Unlimited and it was Don't You Cry by Mary Kubica. And I gave this one five stars as well. Super trippy. It goes back and forth between two different perspectives. You have Quinn who is Esther's roommate and then you have this other guy named Alex who lives in this town close to Chicago. They, Quinn and Esther live in Chicago. Quinn is Esther's roommate. Esther goes missing. She's trying to figure out where she went. And also you're a little bit confused about where Alex and his story play into it, but you know it's connected somehow. And at the very end, I was just like totally mind blown. So that's why I got five stars for me, just because I thought that it played into it really, really well, like the whole dual perspectives. So that's everything I've finished so far. And then let me pull it up. I'm currently reading and plan on finishing this today. It is The Neighborhood or The Neighbor War by Katie Bailey. I have read another book by her as well and I loved it. It was so, so, so cute. This is like the definition of closed door slash clean romance. Nothing is explicit. It's so nice. There's no cussing, no excessive language. And don't get me wrong, there's some books where like I really am in the mood to like read a spicy book, but then there's some times where it's like, I just want a sweet, cute little romance. This is enemies to lovers. It's really cute. I'm really enjoying it so far. They're neighbors and they have to fake date, but also they're enemies. So we love enemies to lovers. We love fake dating, love all of it. So far it's really good. It's probably gonna get five stars for me because I just think it's really cute. It's also a pretty quick read. I started it last night and we'll have it finished by today. So that is all 18 books that I have read or have will have finished reading by the end of today for February. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down below what books you guys read in February and I might have to check them out in March. Although my to be read list is probably a mile long right now. Either way, I'd love to hear what you guys read and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.